Hey everyone, Noah here with a bit of art news. There's reports all over the place that say the world could crumble in 2050 if we don't do something about climate change. But many need to see it to believe it. George Steinmetz has been photographing landscapes for four decades, but not the regular way. He flies hundreds of feet off the ground in a motorized paraglider, which looks less like an aircraft and more like something contrived by Wile E. Coyote to try and catch the Roadrunner. Steinmetz has taken pictures from far above every continent, and one thing's clear to him, the Earth is changing. For example, the water of the Dead Sea has been falling a meter every year due to irrigation feeding the agricultural industry. Algae blooms are exploding in Lake Taihu in China due to warming waters, and chin-strap pangolin colonies are dwindling as they lose their sources for food and shelter. You like that, everybody? We're killing happy feet. No more singing and dancing penguins for us, just dead ones. And, you know, before you get on me saying, um, actually, the penguins in Happy Feet are emperor penguins, shut up. I know. I'm a fucking Happy Feet fanatic. Plus, as far as I'm concerned, a penguin's a person no matter how small. Or whatever Horton Hears a Who said. Look, I'm all for the environment, obviously. But Steinmetz? This motherfucker really loves the environment. And I only have one question for him. How do you get that thing off the ground with balls that are so fucking big? I mean, there is no way I am ever, ever getting up in a motorized paraglider. I'm scared to fly in general, and you think I'd get in this hunk of scrap metal? Look, no amount of pixie dust is going to make me trust this death trap. So, good on you, George. Keep it up. And yes, I am talking about the glider. Olafur Eliasson has been known to depict the Earth from an interesting perspective. Eliasson released a project called Earth Perspectives on Earth Day back in April. And look, I know that his name isn't Olaf, but that's what I'm going to call him, because I'm bad with names, and it'll also help send home the whole global warming message. You know, because he'll melt if it gets too hot, because now in my mind he's that snowman from Frozen. So Olaf shows nine non-traditional maps of the Earth, aiming to show you the perspective of wildlife rather than humans. For example, he features the Great Barrier Reef as a central part of one map. Another has the Ganges River in India, which, uh, by the way, did you know that that was the first waterway to be granted rights as a human being back in 2017? Pretty cool, India. But... Ecuador recognized the rights of nature in its constitution back in 2008. This is all really cool considering that in the United States, we can't even guarantee basic human rights for all of the people living here. In another project, Olaf depicted the loss of our glaciers. In 1999, he set out to take pictures of a dozen glaciers, and then took pictures of the same glaciers in 2019. And trust me, it looks very bad. Hard to make a joke about that. Our planet is dying and- OH MY GOD! OLAF, YOU'RE MELTING! QUICK! QUICK! EVERYONE! RECYCLE! RECYCLE! Ah, I'm just kidding. There's no amount of individual responsibility that will account for the hundred companies that cause 71% of global emissions. If only we had some kind of enormous governing force that could, oh, I don't know, Force them into complying to simple moral standards so humanity doesn't perish in fires? Seriously, look at all the fires. But, you know, that would make too much sense. To drive his point home, Eliezer also took 24 massive blocks of ice that were lost from Greenland's ice sheet and placed them in London to thaw, forcing passerbys to watch climate change in real time. Olaf stood by and melted alongside with him. So that I can drive this point home, I'm going to put this ice cube right here on my table so that we can all watch as the global warming in this hot ass room melts it. Scientists are using old paintings to piece together mysteries about climate change. And this ain't just no kooky caper. For instance, in one study on the lower Grinwald Glacier, Scientists are able to use paintings to reconstruct its patterns as far back as 1535, 
The glacier advances and recedes through time, and dramatically begins receding at the beginning of the 21st century. Another study uses sunsets to estimate levels of dust in the air following volcanic events through history, which is pretty cool. But man, if they had to go on depictions of my sunsets in a hundred years, they'd probably be pretty confused. And quite possibly concerned. Some of the most important takeaways from all of these studies are not in numbers and data, but in human behavior. How were humans in the past adapting to climate change? How can this help us look at how we adapt in the future? In a painting with 13 hunting dogs and only one dead fox, you can imagine what a freezing cold winter was like to survive in. In an effort to reuse waste, many artists incorporate it into their art. For instance, photographer Antoine Repressi, or Reprise, or Repre I don't know, I'll dub it in later, I'm bad with names. He collected garbage in his apartment to do a series of photographs with. He depicted people getting on with their normal lives just surrounded by trash. So basically what I do on a daily basis. Essentially saying that we are ignoring the global waste crisis. So no mom, I'm not forgetting to take out the trash. I'm making art. Other artists reuse thrown out materials to create their art. For example, artist Von Wong created two massive waves out of repurposed plastic straws and artist Wim DeVoy makes spirals out of car tires. Or there's Khalil Christie, who makes sculptures out of plastic bags. So, you know, maybe this year, our Christmas ornaments can be, I don't know, old soda cans. And we can decorate our apartments with, with candy wrappers, you know? I mean, it, it's like all this trash that I've been saving, it's not even trash at all. This. This is art, and this, this is art. All of it's art, it's just waiting to be tapped into. If you haven't noticed, we like to be kind of negative on this show sometimes. Because honestly, people are more likely to watch if you get riled up. That's why I get so crazy. Please, like, subscribe. Did you enjoy when I trashed my room and put a block of ice on the table? I'm doing it all for you people. Please, <laughs> give me some fucking YouTube money! On to glitter. Glitter. It's glamorous, cute, sparkly. Everybody loves glitter. Even sea creatures. Cause they're choking that shit down like it's grandma's famous apple pie. Not only is glitter more contagious than COVID at a frat party, it's plastic, plain and simple. And to animals, it kinda just looks like food. You know, maybe they don't even try to eat it. Maybe they just breathe it in and it gets stuck in their gills. But after everything with the plastic straws, can this be a single-use plastic we get rid of? I mean, some people need straws. Only Barbie needs glitter. And in the Barbie universe, glitter is a natural resource that must be protected. I'm dead serious. Look, if you haven't watched Barbie Life in the Dreamhouse, you are missing out because it is C'est magnifique. I mean, have you ever spilled glitter? That shit will be in your house for decades. Next time that you want to use glitter, please look for more environmentally friendly solutions like bioglitz. Holy shit! Is that $17 for three and a half grams? I used to get eights in DC for 25 bucks. Are you seriously trying to tell me that biodegradable glitter is almost as valuable as weed? I think I'll stick to the pot. You know, make the entire world a little glittery. No plastic needed. Plus, all that glitter is bad for your health too. When you use face wash, lotions, and other beauty products with glitter in them, you're basically inviting microplastics into your body to have a party together. And it's not a fun party like you'd have with weed. It's like a party where you get corona on the way out. Which, I guess is like all parties right now. I mean, what the fuck are y'all doing still throwing parties? Speaking of single-use plastic, fuck balloons. I have personal beef with balloons. Turtles eat the shit out of them and the balloon strings get wrapped around their necks. And yes, my personal beef is in fact because I was raised by turtles. A study in 2019 says balloons are the number one hardest thing for sea life to ingest. At Two Oceans Aquarium in South Africa, Bob the Turtle, in addition to a whole host of health problems, 
pooped out several balloons with strings attached. Can you imagine what it would be like to go to a party, see a bunch of brightly colored, delicious looking candies, scarfing it down just to choke on a bunch of plastic? Okay, those two are easy. And, and I don't want to ask our audience too much, but there is just one teensy tiny additional way you can stop using art to harm the environment. And look, it's okay. I know you didn't know any better. And I've been guilty of this a time or two in the past myself. But when you go to creeks and stack rocks on top of each other to make those cute little rock sculptures, you're actually sucking the life out of baby salamanders. An article by The New Yorker claims that the movement of so many stones can cause erosion, damage to the animal's ecosystem, and even disrupt river flow. The act became prevalent from the hashtag rock stacking. But you can still look for salamanders. Just make sure that when you're done, you put the rocks back very carefully, you nature lovers, you. But seriously, we're all gonna die. Well, that's... Ah! God! Global warming, why? It's a bit. It's a stage. I slip on the ice and... Well, that's it for a bit of art news. Remember, if you enjoyed today's video, please like and subscribe. Forcing passerbys to walk... Passersby. Passerby... Pass... Passerbys? Pass...